Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews, Hebrews 4, verses 12. Hebrews 4, verses 12, it says, For the word of God speaks, is alive and full of power. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any.
tonight. Thank you, Father, that even in this morning we see your grace. Your grace abounds in this house. And we honor you. We bless you. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the adoration that, Father, in you, O oh Lord, we enter not by the works that we have done, but by your grace and your grace alone. Spirit of the living God, the city of Goshen adores you this morning. The city of Goshen loves and honor you this morning. Oh, sweet spirit, we thank you for being in the room. Thank you for changing lives. Thank you for convicting families in this morning's service. Father, we just want to say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, city of Goshen. Good morning, city of Goshen. Good morning, everyone. I greet everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings to everyone that is joining us online from wherever you are in the country or in the world. We welcome you and we love you. And we pray that may you be blessed through the service this morning. Hallelujah. And we greet everyone in the house, the one who are on campus. We bless the Lord that you are here today. It's a chilly Sunday in Johannesburg, but God is still God. And we thank him that he's a God of all seasons. Thank you that even in this time, his love shall never cease for his, for, for his children. Amen. So this morning as we enter into our main service, I just want us to go into the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 in the, in the NLT version. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want us to read the verses 16 and 17. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The word says, All scripture is inspired by God and it is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Hallelujah. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Hallelujah. This is, this is so close to my heart this morning. That's what I was trying to get just before we started now. This, this word is so close to my heart that if the scriptures are breathed by him, who is our maker, who is our, our everything, there is no way that the scriptures can come and lie to us. Hallelujah. He says, if we, we do not believe that it is him that is talking to us, then we are deeming him to be a liar. So this morning, I want us to really take a posture of understanding where we are, of understanding what we are here for. Have you seen people, if they have to receive the president of South Africa, whether you love him or you don't, you will stand still. You will stand still and show honor. And this morning, I want us to show honor to our Father for what he did in this very week through his word. He taught us that we need to win as, as, as people of the city. We need to win in our relationships. We need to be resilient in all that we do. Indeed, the teachings that we've been getting are very useful for our lives. They are making us to realize what it is right from what is wrong. We will never know what is wrong if we do not have the word. Hallelujah. The word is supposed to enter our hearts and it needs to manifest because of, he says, when we believe in our hearts, then there shall be the rivers of, of life that flows out of our bellies. We will not have rivers of life if we do not, singer means easy. So the word must really be rooted in our hearts for us to take it out. And when we do, he says in 17, God uses us to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. I don't know how many people in this house or online want to do good works for the Lord. I know I do. Even this morning we were praying that we will be the first ones. We will not be like Gideon who had excuses of why God wanted to use him. So this morning as the word is going to be preached in this house in song and in word, we want to receive it. So this morning I want to give our postures of us receiving God through his word. So say, Father, I am here because I'm here to say thank you. Maybe you are here to say, redo me or revive me 
re-energize me. I don't know what's your read today, but I want you to take that posture of you giving your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, let this word come out and heal our land. Let it heal our families. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, this morning we just want to say thank you. Thank you that indeed the scriptures are God-breathed, like you breathed nost- in, into the nostrils of men. Father, there was life. Even this morning, we prayed through this word to say, let the word breathe in our lives, breathe in our hearts, breathe in our families, breathe, oh Father, most of all in our souls, that we may hear you. We want to connect with you, oh Father, and we want you to breathe Breathe, breathe upon these lives. Breathe, oh Father. Breathe, breathe your name, Jesus. Breathe your word, Jesus. Breathe your works, Jesus. Oh, breathe through your word, oh Father. Let it not return to you void. We want to do the good works, the useful works. Father, let this word start with me. Let this word start with the city of Goshen. Let this word start with West Dean, Johannesburg, the world. Let it begin with us this morning. We refuse to return the same. We refuse to let your word return to you void. But this morning we ask that let your word, O Father, be like a spear or a sword in our arms. We want to use it. We refuse to limit you, O Jesus, and we will not return without taking our serious positions where we know that we are positioned for this generation. Let this word, O Father, minister to everyone sitting down, lying in a in a deathbed, lying somewhere, Father, in a corner. Let it minister to them this morning. Let it minister to our city. Let it minister to our country. Let it minister to me. Oh, Let it minister to the one who will give it to us. Let it minister to the worshippers, to the ashes. Let it minister to the car guards and the security guards. Let it minister to your children, oh Father. Let it minister to this generation. Let it minister, oh Father, to all of us. We refuse to return home the same. We refuse to return home the same because if we are the same, oh Father, you have not done it, but we know that you're a God that does all things because you can do exceedingly abundantly above all we think or even ask. Father, do it even this morning. Do it, oh Father, for the city of Goshen. Do it, Lord. Do it, Father. Do it, Holy God. Oh, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. I want us, as in the next three minutes, I want us to really thank God. We thank God according to Psalms 23. You know, David, when he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We want to thank him that, Lord, you know, I'm not being, um, I'm, I'm not trivializing someone who does not really have it, but I want us to thank God that we have, that we have a shelter. Someone out there is looking for that. We have salvation and we are still praying that let the world receive Christ. So we need to thank him tonight, this morning that indeed we are we are the blessed of the Lord. We are the righteous of the Lord. And we are billionaires of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to praise the Lord because he says, let everything that has breath praise him. In the book of Psalm 150, he says, praise him with a sounding gong. Praise him with songs. Praise him with psalms. So this morning, I just want us to really thank the Lord that he has done great things. Let us not forget his benefits, but let 
let us thank the Lord for being in his house. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. This morning, Lord, as the city, Father, as families this morning, we just want to say thank you. We praise you because you are God. We do not praise you, O oh Father, only because we have homes or we have this or that, but we praise you because you are sovereign, your Lord. We praise you because you are Alpha, you are Omega. We praise you that you are the one that has brought us safety. You are the one that has protected us. You are the one that brought us, oh Father, even in this house this morning. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Because you said you commanded a, a blessing when brothers stand in unity. Father, we thank you that there is unity. We thank you that there is love. We thank you that there is peace. Oh, Shayanda Lama Sayedle Kosie. Thank you for healing our land. Thank you for healing our church. Thank you for healing our communities. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are good and your mercies they endure us forever. Thank you that we have not seen anyone like you and there can never be anyone like you. Thank you, Jesus, that you took the cross for the city. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood has never failed us. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood still speaks than the speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Thank you, Jesus, that with the same blood we have put it in our homes and we have not experienced death. With the same blood we stood the test of time. With the same blood we made prophets in our companies. With the same blood we were able to separate good from bad. With the same blood we were able to stand and say you are God. With the same blood that is marked on our foreheads. We were able to resist the devil. Oh, with the same blood, we were able to stand. Oh, thank the Lord Goshen. Don't you have anything to thank him for? Don't you have anything to thank him for? Father, we thank you for the breath in our lungs. Father, we thank you for our minds are sane. Father, we thank you for our legs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for health. Thank you, Jesus, that our children are safe. They are not kidnapped. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That indeed it is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our eyes. Father, thank you. Oh, city of Goshen, you need to learn to say thank you. You need to say thank you. We can't just come to him for problems, but we need to say thank you. 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 Oh, la mama la la ma say. We need to say thank you. We need to say thank you. Oh, we need to say thank you because everything in us, eh, shada babasya, it is still standing. Say thank you this morning. Oh, rababashi anda la ma say. Rebebeshi kayanda la ma say. Oh, rababasha kandele mokosye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the new souls that are coming into heaven tonight. Thank you, Jesus, that this service is better than the last yesterday's service. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There is grace in the season. There is power in the season. There is anointing in the season. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah, Goshen. Come on, somebody give Jesus a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Come on, I said, are you ready to praise the Lord? Come on, the heavens are open. We're going to exalt God. Hallelujah.
heaven's soul when he's present he's here the anointing is here this glory is here the heavens are open his presence is here the anointing is here his glory the heavens are open the anointing Come on, let's lift it up, everybody. The heavens are open. The anointing is glory. The heavens are open. The anointing is glory. The heavens are open.
Oh, we're gonna praise this God. Huh. Come on, every morning. Whoa.
Okay. 
the book of the book of the book of second kings second kings chapter 3 they are in the wilderness and they need a word from god scripture tells us that they then summon elisha they say that won't you entreaty god on our behalf because we need to win this battle then Elisha says, if it were up to me, I wouldn't do this thing you're asking me because you don't believe in this God that you're trying to get help from. But then in verse 15, he says, bring me a minstrel who can play the harp. And after he's ministered, the, word, the hand of the Lord will come upon me. Here's what he's saying. Praise and worship creates an environment for us to experience the hand of God. I wish I had about 12 people in this room who need the hand of God this morning to give God an I need you kind of praise, to give God an I can't make it without you kind of praise, to give God a praise that says, if you don't come now, I might die, to give God the kind of praise that says my life on it, to give God the kind of praise that says that if your hand is not upon me, the enemy can have my life, but because of your hand of grace, I will make it. I will make it. You will make it. God's hand is upon you. Won't you celebrate God one more time because His hand is upon you. Therefore, Father, we bless your name. This morning we worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. You are the great I am. You are the God of the heavens. You are the one who was, who is, and who is to come. You sit in the eternal realm. You govern space, time, and matter. You fashioned our days before even one of them came to existence. You're a gracious God, a good God who appeased his own wrath by giving his only begotten son for the sake of our sins, for the sake of our death, so that we might have and enjoy everlasting life. For that privilege, for that honor, we give you glory this morning because we know that we're nothing without you. Like fish out of water, so are we out of your presence. There's no place we'd rather be, Father, but where you are. Therefore, we give you praise, we give you glory. And it's in the name of Jesus that we've worshipped. Amen and amen. On your way down, greet somebody. Tell someone hello on your way to your seat. Won't you say hi to someone, high five them. Give them a handshake. Good morning, city of Goshen. Are we doing all right this morning? I thought you'd be more excited than that to be in God's presence. All right. My name is Siabong, and I've been conscripted to give you announcements. Um, due to the brevity of time, I'm not going to take too much time. But before I get to the announcements, I wish you could join me as we appreciate and acknowledge the father of this ministry, our pastor, the man that God has set up. For our sake, he's not in the room this morning, but we celebrate God for him. We celebrate God for him indeed. In the same vein, join me now that you're standing as we celebrate the first lady who's in the building this morning. We love you so much. We really do. And also, we have a very special, I don't want to call him a guest, but we have someone who is here for the first time, but we believe that this won't be the last time. We have the singular ministry gift and the grace and the person of Pastor Koketso. He's in our midst this morning. Won't you celebrate God for him? Mm. 
I was going to attempt to pronounce your surname, but I don't want to embarrass both of us this morning. We celebrate God for you. <laughs> we love you so much. And uh, of course, Mami Tato and Muhawu who would have released you to come to us, we celebrate them as well. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm seeing a general in the room as well. I don't know if I should, but I don't want to. All right, no, we'll get to that. Let me get through the announcements. Um, on, I think in, on Monday, uh, Mfundisi gave me a call and he said that, see, uh, I think I know what we're going to pray for, for the appraisal. I think I know what God wants us to entreat to him about. And so we are excited. We're going to get into some of, we're getting into a very good week. So if you are here for the first time, don't mind us. We're a bit crazy because we are very expectant. We're in a very good season as a ministry. Amen. All right. Also, we've got some people that are watching us online. If you're joining us online, welcome to the city. We believe that the word that's going to be preached here this morning is going to minister to you as well. Um, anyone here for the first time? Anyone here for the first time? Won't you stand? your way down. Thank you for coming to the city this morning. You could have gone anywhere, but we are grateful that you would have come to fellowship together with us. Um, we believe also that God has a word for you. That's why you're here. We are celebrating what God's going to say to you, and we're celebrating what God's going to do in your life, even as you've joined us. After the service, uh, Mom Fundisi will be right here in front, ready to meet you, to greet you. I know that our team will take your details as well just to make sure we're able to connect with you and not, a, not, not that you need convincing, but to convince you to stick around even more. Amen? All right. Um, for our first-time visitors again, our restrooms are positioned as follows. They are to my left, your right. There's a wall there. Just behind that wall, that's where you're welcome to relieve yourself. Um, and let me tell you about who we are. As the city of Goshen... Our vision is to, is to see Christ revealed in the inner city in South Africa, in Africa, and the world. That's according to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. And our vision is to demonstrate the love of Christ. And that's according to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 14. Any demonstrators in the house? Anyone who demonstrates the love of God in the house? <laughs> Amen. Well, we've got some weekly services that we usually have, though this one is going to be a special week because we're going to be coming here every evening. Every evening at 6 o'clock, we'll be here praying. Um, we have our media appraisal. I'm going to speak about that in a few moments. But this week, um, but I know for sure that we're still going to have our Monday morning prayer on Instagram tomorrow. So Pastor Colin will be live on our Instagram pray page just search for at We Are Go City on Instagram. That's where we pray together. Amen. So 5 o'clock till 6 o'clock in the morning, we are praying live on Instagram. Who attends those prayers? I don't want to say streams. Who attends them? Who participates? <laughs> Amen. Some of you from your beds. We see you. All right. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, next week, Sunday, though, is a special one because we'll be back in the city Day seven of our media appraisal, and we're going to have someone who's really special to the city. Bishop Malumane is coming. He's coming to the city. I thought you'd be more excited than that. <laughs> All right, let me tell you who he is. He came here, we were that side. He preached a message on the four horns. Who remembers that? The four horns. One of the horns that he addressed quite vehemently was the horn of limitations and barriers. And he said that God has broken barriers in our lives. And then he came back, he stood right on this altar, and he delivered a message, and he told us that the stone has been rolled away. Who remembers that? Go City, don't embarrass me. We've got visitors. <laughs> they must know we listen to the word. Amen. So he's coming back next week. It's going to be exciting. 
Um, also, I want to encourage you, if you are planted in the city, if you, are, uh, if you know that God wants you to be here for the season of your life, I want to encourage you to join us as we serve God. We have a couple of service departments and group up, groups up and, run, up and running, brother. We've got Sound of Goshen behind me. Clap for Sound of Goshen. <laughs> yes, I am biased. These are my friends. We've got Sound of Goshen behind me. And then we've got every other department. I'm kidding. <laughs> we've got ushers. We've got sanctuary keeping that keeps this place clean, an important one. There's protocol. There's the media team at the back. So in whatever, okay, hi, media team, hello. <laughs> All right. So there's a couple of important, and each and every service department is important. We must say this, that your cleaning doesn't make you any less important than someone who gets to stand on the altar and minister in any capacity. Amen. So join us as we serve God. Is that all right? I'm the person to see. So right after the service, you're welcome to come to me. Depending on how you want to serve, I'll direct you to the right channel. Is that all right? All right. And then now for the special announcements, like I said, tomorrow um, we are starting our seven days of revival. That is our prayer and fasting. Only two people are excited. I understand not a lot of us want to do away with food. Especially in winter. Uh, but God is faithful. Amen. So join us as we fast and pray. Uh, the idea behind the media appraisal and the vision is that we would have given God our prayer points at the beginning of the year. So it's important to come back to Him halfway through the year and say, Lord, these are the things that we had asked you for. You've done one, two, three. We are still trusting you for this, that, and the other thing. And also we made promises to God. So we're going to take stock and see how far we are. Someone said, I like that. We're going to tick some boxes and check which boxes, which boxes still need ticking. Amen? All right. And then in November... All right, in November, we have our Shiloh Conference. Oh, okay. We have our Shiloh Conference. <laughs> we have our Shiloh Conference. <laughs> or Shiloh, whatever you prefer. Depends how much money your parents paid for school fees, amen? <laughs> nah, I'm teasing, church. <laughs> Y'all are going to hit me this morning. We have our Shiloh Conference. That is our homecoming conference. Um, it was on the, I think on the 26th of November, uh, just about almost two years ago now, we had our very first service at the, at the, as the city of Goshen. And every year in November, we come back and say, Lord, thank you. It is our Ebenezer moment to say, Lord, you've brought us this far. Look at what the Lord has done. Look at this beautiful auditorium. In, in less than two years. Well, all right. So, yeah. I thought you might want to celebrate. So we're going to come here. Registration for that is opening at the beginning of July. So uh, we just want to know how many people to expect. So that should we need to add more chairs. But I think we're going to have to, Mom Fundisi. Looking at, look, it's pretty much almost full right now. So we're going to have to add some chairs. But just for us to know and to cater to everyone that's going to come here, please register. We're going to post the details on our socials. Is that all right? All right, so about, about the media appraisal, Mfundisi will be posting online uh, the prayer points for the day and the morning. We're going to pray according to them. And then in the evening, every day, we're going to come here and pray together. Is that good? All right, all right. Um, before I, I go to, are we ready? Or you can, you can come through, Brother Hibbert. He's going to take up offering. Before we get to that, like I said, um, I'm noticing Pastor Dick Koza, who's in the building, um, so we celebrate you. We see you. He's not alone. He's got some people with him. This is a general in the kingdom. And we honor God for you. Thank you for coming to fellowship with us, sir. We love you dearly. These are the fathers in the nation. Amen. All right, Brother Hebert is coming through to take up offering. Enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. Let's appreciate Brother Sia. Amen. Uh, good morning. Amen. We honor the presence of our mother and come on, let's appreciate her again. And 
our Father, I believe he will be watching you. Amen. And also we honor the presence of the man of God and, and all the rest, women and men of God. Amen. Can we just raise up on our feet? We're going to give. I would request the ushers to get the offering baskets ready. And uh, we have different platforms on which we're going to give. But as we give our offering, I want us to pray first. Just get hold of your offering, whether it's your phone that you're going to use to give, whether it's uh, cash, just get hold of your offering. And we speak a grace and a blessing. Father, we thank you because you give seed to the sower and bread to the eat. You multiply and increase. As we give into your presence, as we give towards your work and your mandate, we know that we do this purposefully as we have believed in our hearts. For you love a cheerful giver who gives out of the gift that they have received from you. And we believe, oh God, that as we give towards your mandate, you increase and multiply us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can go ahead and give. Ashes, please. Uh, as we give our offering, it's very important for us to notice that the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver who gives out of the abundance and the overflow of that which they have received from God. Amen. Would I also request one Ashes to bring uh, up here so we can also give. God is a blessing to you. Make sure every time you enter the presence of God, offering and carrying a gift and, you know, carrying your tithe, carrying your fast fruits, carrying your appreciation to God. Make sure it's the number one thing that you bring in the presence of God. You can forget your Bible, never forget your offering. Praise the Lord Jesus, because we use Bibles every Sunday. We put it up there. We do everything. You can forget the Bible and never forget your offering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your neighbor can borrow your Bible. Your friend can give you scriptures. We can put for you there. But your gift in the presence of God is more important than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Have we all given? Okay, come on. Clap your hands for God and appreciate him. You are
Jackson in the Majaonke, Ufanelo and Uncle Senamanja, Ufanelo and Amsanjim in the Majaonke, Ageko Fana now and Amsanjak Seni, Upageme and Uncle Senamanja, We are Pili Sawena, We are Tanda Wena, We are Busi Sawena, Siganuk Siguni along to Munam Sanjak Seni in the Majaonke, Sis Upageme and Amsanjak Seni, Upageme in the Majaonke. Age kofana na wem nini manja wonke. Age kosi tanda njenga wem nini manja wonke. Age kosi busi sanjenga wem namshanje nini manja wonke. Sia ubongo tumolua ko. Sia ubongo guba kona gua kona namshanje kseni. Sia ubongo nini manja wonke. Sia alpera misi kamala keli ngwele. Ui ngwele wena. Ui ngwele wena. Wete begi le wena. Age kofana na wem nini manja wonke. Ui ngosi ama kosi wena. Upage muweta. We give honor and thanks to you this morning, Father. You are highly exalted in this place. We are so grateful to be in your presence. We are so honored to smell your fresh presence in the name of Jesus. Umuse, upageme, 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 unamanda, unamanda, uya pilisa, uya pilisa, age kufana nawe, umuse wena, umuse wena, wetembe gile mini manda wonke, augaze wa silasha wena, ushefu natu wena, ushefu mgela wena, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of Psalms 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and the one who rescues me, my God, my rock, and strength in whom I trust and take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my stronghold. Hallelujah. He is our stronghold. Hallelujah. He is our rock. He is our strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will never, never, ever leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. In, stand firm, be bold, be strong. Hallelujah. He will never ever leave nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Without, any, without wasting any time, I would like to honor and welcome the man of God, Pastor Goketo. Please help me welcome him. Father, you are kind. Your mercy endured forever. Thank you that we have the privilege to be called your children. Thank you that we are a chosen people, a royal princehood, a holy nation, called according to your purposes, created in Jesus Christ for good works. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that it was not for good works that we were saved but unto good works that we are saved. Thank you that you have saved us. You saw us worthy of your love, even when we did not see ourselves worthy. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that each and every person who has come here, may you meet them at the point of their needs. You know why they came here. You know why they are standing here this morning. You know why you have brought them to this point. Despite myself. May you meet them at the point of their need. May each and every one experience you this morning in a powerful and a personal way. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' glorious name. And the church of God said, 
You see, when we sing, when we sing this song, we give you all the glory. It means there's nothing left for us. There's none of that glory that is left for us. It all belongs to Him. But sometimes we get caught up in the collective that we forget that He did not save us. He saved me. You see, sometimes when we say, we give you, we, it, it does not hit the spot where I was like, you were not there when He saved me. I, I, when I sing this song, I say, I give you all the glory and I give you all the honor because when I was deep in the mighty clay, when I was broken, I was by myself. When I was confused, I was by myself. I only know where you took me from. I know how deep my mud was. I know how strong my strongholds was. I know how broken I was. So I'm not going to ask for my neighbor to join me. I'm going to sing it by myself and say, I give you all the glory because of where you have taken me from. If you did not come through for me, what would have happened to me? If you did not come and pick me up from my deep mighty head, I would still be lost. Ah, excuse me, my neighbor. I am not going to say we. I'm going to say I, I give him all the glory for he alone is deserving. Oh, you were not there. You don't know how broken I was. You don't know how sad I was. You don't know how anxious I was. You don't know how depressed I was. If you are not going to give him the glory, I don't need assistance in giving him the glory. I give him the glory all by myself. I'll give him the glory all by myself. I will give him the glory all by myself. I will give him glory all by myself. I thank you for saving me. I'm, I'm glad that he also saved you. But do you mind if I just... Because listen, I don't know what he saved you from. But man, I have a story. And it does not look pretty. I have a story. It does not look good. If I was God, I would not have looked my way. If I was the Savior, I would not have looked my way. But I thank God that I'm not the Savior, that He is the Savior. And despite me, He looked my way. I am so grateful. So then, I give you all, all of the glory. I am comfortable with him taking all the glory. I am comfortable with him receiving all of the glory because of what he has done. Because of what he has done. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a loving God. And Father, this morning, we thank you for your grace that knows no end that you loved us so much today we celebrate your love for us we say take all the glory we reserve nothing for no one else but you in Jesus mighty name and the church of God said Amen My name is Koketsu Molaule, and I, I, I come from a church in Pretoria, Musa Church, 
and I send greetings from Musa Church. Uh, I am married to the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, if you if you disagree, we will have a fight. Her name is Tato, and uh, she is back at home. She's uh, she's holding the fort that side. And uh, I want to honor Mom Fundis. Thank you so much. Guys, you know, to have a wife who can hold the fort while you are not around. It's such a blessing. Pastor Colin is so blessed. Thank you. And uh, I want to I wanna thank Pastor Colin in his absence. Uh, you guys are blessed with a great man of God. What a loving guy. He loves God, he loves his family, and he loves this church. And uh, Goshen, good morning. Uh, what a great church, man. What a great church. I love church, right? Like I really, really love church, but I love a good church. So I, I love all the churches, but especially good church. I, I'm a sucker for good church. And, uh, and I love this church. And I love the spirit and the speed of this church. Uh, God has just done something incredible here. And it is marvelous in our eyes. John 4. John writes a story of uh, a woman. A woman who was quite disruptive and self-sabotaging. Uh, John writes a story of a woman who was not popular for the right reasons. She was popular for every wrong thing imaginable. Uh, it's a story of a woman who was known for her less than godly ways. Uh, it is a story of a woman who had not just made one mistake. It actually looked like she enjoys making mistakes. A, a, a disruption was a, a, a permanent feature in her life. And yet she makes a way into the holy book. And, and that on its own is the work of grace. That out of a broken story, God can tell a good story. And I'm trusting this morning that out of your broken story, a good story shall emerge out of the brokenness, the remnants of your brokenness, a good story shall emerge. Amen. I don't know about you. I come from a very broken story. And most of us, we find ours, if we were to just count, not the blessings, but count the messes up that we have done throughout our lives, would realize that if it had not been for grace, we would not be here. And, and the Bible in John 4, the Bible says, Jesus arrived at Samaria, uh, uh, at the Samaritan village of Sika, near a field that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Uh, wearied by his long journey, he sat on the edge of Jacob's well and sent his disciples into the village uh, to buy food, for it was already in the afternoon. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to this broken woman, this lost woman, this adulterous woman, this woman who had been divorced five times, give me water to drink. Give me water to drink. And she replied, why would a Jewish man ask a Samaritan woman for water to drink? For Jews had no dealings with, for Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus replied, if you knew, son, say to someone, if you knew, if you only knew, and that's the title of my message this morning, if you only knew, if you only, you would not be thinking the way you are thinking, if you only knew, you would not be behaving the way you are behaving, if you only knew, your thoughts would not be set up the way they are set up, if you only knew, some of us, we are the way we are, because we do not 
No, he says, if you only, he says, you are speaking the way you are speaking because you do not know if you only knew. And I'll say, God, I want to know. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to know because I know that in knowing what you have, I know who I am. And when I know who I am, I can live as the righteousness of God. He says, if you only knew who I am. The gift that God wants to give you. You would in turn ask me for a drink and I would give you living waters. It says, if you knew who I was, the roles would have been reversed. The way you pray would be different. The way you fast would be different. The way you read your word would be different. Only if you knew who you are in conversation with. If you knew that I am the creator of the heavens and the earth. I am the alpha and the omega. Nothing was except that was created through the light of men and the light of men is Jesus Christ. If you knew who I was, you would not come to me with a limited prayer list, but you will come to me with boldness. You will approach the throne room of grace so that you may receive mercy in your time of need but you do not know that's why when you approach the throne room of grace you are timid you are not bold because you do not know it says if you knew and what I love about that it says it says because of Christ we get to approach the throne room of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy in our time of weakness. What is that meaning? It means even when we are weak, we can still walk boldly. Because why am I walking boldly if I am here to receive mercy in my time of weakness? There is an oxymoron in the scripture itself. There is a contradiction. It says you will walk boldly into the throne room of grace so that you may receive mercy in your time of weakness are you saying I am coming weak yet I am walking bold it's as if if you only if you only knew the woman replied but sir you don't even have a bucket because we have the tendency to undermine what God can do because in human eyes you need a bucket to draw water and he says, but I am the living water. I don't need a bucket to draw water. I am the living water. He says, but say you do not have, have, have you, when, when we pray to God, we want him to, to, to lower himself to the levels of our restrictions. We, we pray to God having set up stuff that the parameters with, within which he must operate. He says, God, may, maybe you can give me water, but you don't have a bucket. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind that you can give me water, but where is your bucket? God, I don't, I don't mind that you can open the doors, but where, where is the connection? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dispute that you are a provider, but where is the job? Because there is, there is, there is a, there's a way of doing things that we are accustomed to and we think that God is going to show up according to that which we are accustomed to. That's why the woman, because she came with a bucket, she, is, she thinks Jesus needs a bucket. She says, because... <laughs> say... You do not even have a bucket. And the well is very deep. Jesus is saying, this is what I want to do. You are giving him a list of excuses. The well is very deep. So where do, where do we find, where do you find this living water? Do you really think you are greater than our ancestors? It's getting insulting now. Yeah, now it's getting, it's getting personal. He says to Jesus, do you think you are better than our ancestors. Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it himself, along with his children and livestock. Then Jesus says, if you drink from Jacob's well, you will thirst again. But if you drink from the living water I give 
them, they will never thirst again. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, flooding with endless life. Then the woman, the woman said, let me drink that water so I never thirst again that I will not have to come back here again. Woo. Let me drink that water so that I don't thirst again, so that I don't have to come here again. What a beautiful... Whew. Man, there's places where I'm like, I don't want to come here again. Let me not get ahead of myself. You see, I, I need a volunteer. If I can just have one person who's just going to help me. Just one. You can take the bucket and put it there. See the bubble? The Bible says, yeah, you can come. Just one, one, one of you can just stand here. Thank you, my brother. That's good. Let's suppose this bottle of water represents life. It represents your life that you are given from birth by God. It's full. It's sealed. The Bible says, before I knew, before I, I created in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I predestined that you will be a prophet unto my nation. That in you, I put life. The Bible says, I chose you before the foundations of the earth. And I prepared good works for you. Created you in Jesus Christ. So that you, you may perform these this good works. So when we were created by God, He created us already with a life that is full. He created us already with a life that is, that is, that is full. And then he gives us this life. And then, then we open, open it. And then let's look at the story of this woman. She has the life and the life is given to her. And then she gets married for the first time. And she messes it up. You can pour some of the water in there. She messed up that which was given to her by God. There is now a deficit. But as if that was not enough, she gets married for the second time. And then she messes up again. And then she, she pours her life into nothingness again. Poor my brother. Poor, don't, don't be afraid. It's not your life. Yours is still okay. Uh, fine. Don't, don't finish the water now. And, and she gets married for the third time. And then she, she pours her life out. She gets married for the fourth time and she messes that up again. She gets married for the fifth time and then she, she messes that up again. She had a life that was full and out of her own decision, she messes up her life. And with every mess up, there's a, there's a depreciation in value. There's a depreciation in life. There's a depreciation in quality. There is a depreciation. And look at what is left. There, there's, there's not much left as if there is not enough. Jesus Christ approaches her and says, you have been divorced five times, but you also are cohabitating with a man who's not your husband. Poor my brother. It was a full life before my mom deserted me and I started getting stuck in a rut of, of, of self-sabotaging ways. Because this woman was not making a mistake. She was living in a pattern of self-disruption. There was a pattern here. And, and that's, that's what trauma does to us. We, 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 we get to, in our effort to run away from the trauma, we get into unhelpful self-sabotaging patterns. I don't know someone is here. I don't know about you, but there, there were patterns 
that I found myself following because there was a void inside of me that I was trying to close and the more I went for this pattern, the more I spent my life, the more I tried to close this gap, the more I spent the life that God had given me. While these things promised to set me free, they actually put me in bondage even the more. I felt empty and I went for alcohol and it promised me that I would feel better. But it never did. I went for sex and it promised me that I will feel better, but I never did. I went for money, I went for stuff, I went for gold, I went for things and the more of these things I went for, the more I broke myself. The more I try to deal with these things, the more I sabotage myself. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 14, verses 12, it says, There are ways that appear to be right in a man's eyes, but they lead to death. And someone says, Mfundisi, you don't understand. I thought this would lead to life. Every time I got into it, I thought this time it would lead to life. Every time I committed the sin, I thought this time it would lead to wholeness. I, I, every time I had a sip, I thought that this time it would deal with my emptiness. Every time I slept with her, I, I thought this time I would fill the gap that my mother left me with. But every time I went, I came back more broken. I wanted more. And the more I went, the more of my life I lost. The more of my life I lost, Kim says, the lack of understanding of our emotions leads to creating a narrative that alters our thinking. It awakens ego and fear and results in self-sabotage without becoming emotionally intelligent and mature, we will live our lives in the shadows lose ourselves and succumb to the unhealthy coping mechanism that have now become a lifestyle. There's someone who's sitting here who's saying, Fundis, it was meant to be a coping mechanism. I don't know when did it become a lifestyle. There's someone who says, it was just meant just to help me cope. I don't know when did it become a lifestyle. I was just trying to get by. I was just trying not to feel anxious. I was not, I was just trying to feel a sense of worth inside of me. I, I, every time he held me, I felt like I felt better. But the moment he left, I was back to square one. Every time I had the taste, I felt better. But the moment I was sober, I was back to square one. Every time I took the drug, every time I got the attention, every time I lied, every time I gossiped, for a moment it made me feel better. But the moment it stopped, I was back to square one. It was supposed to be a coping mechanism. I don't know how it became a lifestyle. Now, that's all that's left. That's all that's left of my life. That's all that's left of the life that God gave me. There's nothing much left. And sometimes, guys, we get to that point where you look at your life, you're like, there's nothing left. I have broken myself more than any person can break themselves. There is nothing left. And guys, it was so bad that there was, there, was, there was not just nothing left. The stinge of nothingness was on this woman to a point where no one wanted to go with her to go and fetch water. Because that's the thing about the people of this world. They like you when you're smelling good. The minute you are not smelling good, they distance themselves away from you. 
women would go in the early hours of the morning together in a group to go and fetch water. She was in the afternoon and she was alone. Because the, 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 her, 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 her self-sabotage had become a statement of identity. People today, they do no longer, when they ask you, hey, go get to which one? Baru Ola Wabanyan. Where now your description is now, you, you, people have identified you with your mess. Which worship leader? Not that one were alcoholic. Because now your, your mess, and, and mumfun is sometimes the, the, when it becomes painful, is when they are not even wrong. You see, it's one thing if people are accusing you for things you have not done. It's quite the other thing when what they are talking about is exactly what you have done. This but never some sugeli. She had been divorced five times and she was cohabitating. She it was her fault. Because it's easy to say, ah, you know, Bazalan don't like me because you know what? It's another thing when I know. They are right. I have the receipts. I can't even argue. I can't even say, uh -uh, it was not me. I'm like, that was all me. What do you do when everyone distances themselves from you? And even yourself, if you could, you would distance yourself from yourself. We're like, man. Then Jesus comes into the picture. And Jesus shows up and says to this woman, give me some water. Jesus, are you not aware that I have I've poured up all that I had? I messed up so much. Jesus says, give me some water. I don't have anything, man. No one likes me. I am worth nothing. Jesus says, give me some water. I am broken. I have messed up. There are receipts to show how messed up I am. Jesus says, give me some water. Jesus, you don't know my background. You don't know where I come from. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how messed up the situation is. Jesus says, give me some water. He says, there is something that I put inside of you. And the gifts of God are without repentance. He says, I am here to collect what I have put inside of you. Give me some water. No brokenness could stop what I put inside of you. No mess up could stop what I put inside of you. No amount of depression, no amount of sickness, no amount of pain, no amount of trauma could stop what I put inside of you. And I am here to collect. Give me some water. He says, you think it's done. It's done when I say it's done. There is still something inside of you. I know it's little. I know it's not much. But give me some of that. He says, I know your life is broken, but give me that, that broken life. I know that your life is messed up, but give me some of that messed up life. I know that you are the worst of the worst. Give me some of that worst. Because the Bible says, you see guys, the world loves us because our, our bottle is full. But the Bible, my Bible, Romans 5, it says, while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners, what attracted the mercy of God towards us, it was not how shiny we are. It was how sinful we are. He did not look at us and say, look at that beauty. I'm going to die for her. He looked at you and said, look at that mess. I am going to die for her. He says, look at that brokenness. I'm going to die for her. He says, look at that sin. I am going to die. It was not because we were great. Romans 5 says, 
It says, for when the time was right, Jesus came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. I'm like, ha, oh, man, I know. I'm standing here and I look great, but I know that I was helpless. I know that there was nothing worth looking at. I don't know about you guys, but when I, know, when I look at myself, I know there was nothing worth looking at. I don't know, maybe they like you because you are great. He loved me. Guys, it was not an, a transaction of leverage. It was a transaction of love. You see, a transaction of leverage, it says you have something good, give me so that I can give you something good. We are leveraging. Mine was not a transaction of leverage. I, have no, I had nothing good to give to Jesus, but he came for me anyway. It was a transaction of love and not of leverage. There was nothing I had that was great that I could give to him. It says, while we were powerless, I want to speak to someone who is powerless this morning. You are in the right space. I want to speak to someone who's weak this morning. You are at the right spot. I want to speak to someone who's helpless this morning. You are right where Jesus wants you because you, that's the kind of people that he came for. And he says, give me water. Water represents what? Life. He's saying to this woman, there's not much left, but give me some. I want to speak to someone this morning who says, hey man, you don't know how bad it is. There's nothing much left in me. There's nothing much left. I'm like, yeah. Human eyes, they see nothing left. Lazarus was not pretending to be dead. It was not a make show. He was dead. He was, it was not a rehearsal. He was dead, dead, dead. And to show how dead he was, it was a couple of days after he was dead. Because that's what Jesus specializes in. He did not come to make bad people good. He came to resurrect dead people. We were not just bad. We were, we were dead. We were... Guys, listen, listen, listen. This thing was not a, reso a, a renovation. It was a resurrection. This thing, the salvation was not a renovation. He did not come to make something that was ugly to look good. No, it was dead. We were dead and he came and it was a CPR. We, he, popped his, he popped his life into us. We were dead. It was, it was not a cosmetic thing. Sometimes because we act as if Jesus came to improve. I'm like, in me, he did not come to improve anything. He had to get me from deep down. Guys, something that... that gets improved. It's because there's something yana. There's something to work with. They're like, no man, it's not that bad. In my case, it was worse. It was worse. Yet the Bible says, he came. He, he came. And the problem is, with the little that I had, I kept on going back. And wherever I went, they took. Where the places I went to, in the hope to fulfill the brokenness, that place took. Here's the thing about sin, Bazalwan. Sin is an over-promiser and an under-deliverer. Sin will always promise you more than what it can deliver. And, and it always 
downplays the consequences. It says, no man, just eat the fruit, you won't die. From the beginning already, it says, it, sin always downplays the consequences. It says, amen, no one will know. But your soul will have the receipts. Your pastor might not know, but your soul has the receipts. Your, your friends might not know, but your soul has the receipts. The people around you can come and, and preach here and worship here and fool us, but your soul has the receipts. Your soul knows good Your soul knows that I am standing here, I am broken. So this woman has nothing. And she even says to Jesus, Abra, you are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. You are of a chosen people. I am broken. Because when we, when we self-sabotage, it's often because we struggle with self-worth. We struggle with self-worth that is why we, we self-sabotage. And if you read the story, you realize that Jesus appeals to her wholeness before he addresses her brokenness. Because before Jesus says, you have five husbands and so and so, he first says, give me some water. He affirms her first. He said, let me create an environment where I tell you who you are before I tell you what you have done. Because who you are is more important than what you have done. What you are capable of, my destiny inside of you is better than your disruptive life. He says, what I put inside of you is of more importance than your mess. My mercy is more important than your mess. I am going to talk about my mercy before we address your mess. In the story, we would have come in and said to, to someone, you are divorced. Because what we're trying to do is, we're trying to make the person feel so bad so that they can be desperate for us. A lot of people who want to use you, they will remind you of how bad you are. Because if they remind you of how bad you are, your, your, your value depreciates. And then you are like, okay, give me whatever you can. You know when, when someone walks into your shop and they start complaining about your product? No, it doesn't do this, do that, but they still want it. The, the reason why they're complaining about it is because they want to rubbish it. Because they know if they are rubbishing it, the value is depreciating. At the end of the day, because they've convinced you that your product is rubbish, then you will give them for free. Jesus says, let, before we start, let me upgrade your value. Let, let's, let, when we are just getting started, let me tell you what, who you are. You are someone who has something to offer. Before we talk about your mess, let me remind you of who you are. You are someone who has something to offer. Give me some water. Before we talk about your mess, let's talk about my mercy. Give me some water. That's it. That's all that's left. It's nothing. No, it's fine. Leave it, bro. It's nothing. Then Jesus says, if you knew. Now that you have given me the, the nothingness that you have. If you knew who was standing in front of you, if you knew who I was, you would understand that I am not here to take. I am here to give. You would know that I'm not here to take. I am here to give. And I'm going to give you something. But that's not it. I'm going to give you something. 
and that's not it. And I'm gonna don't, don't put it down, don't put it down. I'm gonna give you something. He said, What I'm gonna give you is gonna overflow. You will not have enough space. I am gonna give you life that overflows. I'm gonna give you will not have enough space. enough space you will not have enough space what I'm here to give you you will not have enough space so I'll make you a fountain you will have to call someone to come and help you out he says you have to call someone to come and help you out because it will, you, you will not just drink you will become a fountain. Stay, stay here, brother. You will become a fountain. Jesus under promises and over delivers. She thought he was here like all the other men to come and take. Because the first husband came and made promises and all he did was to leave a mess. The second husband, the third husband, the fourth husband, the fifth husband. And she thought Jesus was one of them. I says, no, 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 no. I am here to upgrade your life. I'm here to over deliver. You are about to become the source. I am not just healing you, but I'm making you a source of healing. He says, if you knew, <laughs> Peter is fishing the whole night and, and he catches nothing. And, and because he catches nothing, everyone is gone. Peter is sitting there, he's washing his net because that's the nature of the people of this world. When you catch nothing, no one wants to be around you. But Jesus comes to Peter and says, Peter, let me step into your boat. He says, Jesus, my boat has nothing inside of it. Let me step into that boat. Jesus, my boat is empty. Let me step into that boat. I am not embarrassed of your empty boat. I'm not embarrassed that you have nothing. Let me step into that boat. And he says to Peter, can I use your boat to preach my gospel? God, are you saying you want to use this sign of failure to preach the gospel? But hold on. You need to understand that an empty boat was, an, was the evidence of failure. Was the evidence that you caught nothing. You have nothing. Jesus says, can I use that? You, you were a drug addict, can I use that? You were a porn addict, can I use that? You were an alcoholic, can I use that? You were a promiscuous, can I use that? To show the world what my grace can do. And Jesus stepped into an empty boat and he preached the gospel. And the Bible says, then he said to Peter, throw the net. And he caught so much that he had to call people. Guys, come and help. And here's the beautiful thing about the story. Peter had worked his all, his, the whole night trying to catch fish. And Jesus comes into his life. He has an encounter with Jesus. And after having an encounter with Jesus, this thing that he has worked the whole night to get was no longer important. The Bible says he left the fish and followed Jesus. He's saying, Jesus, you are more than what you have given me. You 
are worth more than what you have. I don't want your provision as much as I want you. I don't want your healing as much as I want you. Because I know what you, you're worth the money. Let's get close. The Bible says, after, the, after Jesus says, I'll, I'll give you waters that you will never thirst again. And this woman says, Jesus, give me the water. I don't want to come here again. There's someone this morning who says, Jesus, I've been running to alcohol. I don't want to come here again. I've been running to sex. I don't want to come here anymore. Give me some water. I've been running to, to gossip. I've been running to money. I've been running to stuff. I've been running to people. And every time I went there, it left me more broken than it found me. I don't want to go there anymore. Every time I go back to this thing, to this person, to this place, I come back feeling worse than I thought. I don't want to go there again. Give me some water. I tried my own ways. I tried my, my, my own thoughts. I've tried my own patterns. The Paul Washer says, if salvation was 99.9% .9 Jesus and 0.01% us would be doomed. We play no part in our salvation but to receive it. We come with nothing. Someone is saying, you know, there was a guy who was a criminal. Oh man, he was a criminal of the highest degree. And he came into church. And while the sermon was hitting, in the middle of a sermon, like in the middle of a sermon, this guy stands up. He says, I, I want to say something. How? Okay. okay. Brother, can it wait until the service ends? He says, no. It's urgent. I want to say it now. Okay. What is it, my brother? He says, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior into my life. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just not sure if he will accept me. Because there is a wrong notion that makes us believe that there's something we can do to qualify for the grace of God. Can I tell you something? Your virginity does not qualify you. Jojo. Your integrity does not qualify you. Your, your, your straight ways does not qualify you. The fact that you are pure and all does not qualify you. In front of the mercy seat, the prostitute and the girl who has kept herself pure for her whole life, they are the same. It's only by grace and grace alone. It's only by grace and grace alone. And this woman says, I don't want to come back here anymore. Give me your water. Jesus, give me your life. And with all our eyes closed and our heads bowed, I want to speak to someone this morning who says, I don't want to come here anymore. I don't want to go back to my disruptive patterns. I don't want to go back to relying on myself. I don't want to go back to depending on myself. I do not want to go back where I think I can save myself. 
I don't want to go. I don't want to live a life where I am the center of my own life because when, while I am the center of my own life, it ends up in a mess. While I am at the helm, while I'm at the driver's seat, my life is a mess. I have tried it until now and it has not produced anything good. It is a mess. I need someone better to take over from here. I need Jesus. And if that is you, I want to give you this opportunity to receive Him as your Lord and your Savior and let Him give you water to drink. And if you are here and says, I want to receive Him today. I don't want to go back to where I used to be. I don't want to go back to how I used to be. If there is you, just raise your hand high. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Raise your hand high, 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 high. High like someone who is receiving life right now. Thank you, Jesus. And like someone who is really receiving life, I just want you to stand up on your feet right now. And as they stand up on their feet, let's give God a hand of praise. As they stand up on their feet, let's give God a hand of praise. And just come to the fourth, just come to the front if you are standing. If you are standing, just come to the front and let's give God a hand of praise. Let's give God a hand of praise. Come on, let's celebrate what the Lord is doing. If you are standing, come, come, come. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Thank you, Jesus. Hell has lost the battle this morning. Hell has lost the battle this morning. Heaven has won. Heaven has won. Heaven has won. Heaven has won. Hell has lost the battle. It is a mighty day. It is a beautiful day. It is a day of salvation. It is a day of jubilee. Heaven has won the battle. What a mighty God. What a precious God. What a loving Savior. Wow. Wow, man. Woo. In 2005, on the 13th of February, promise you this one thing. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. He has died to take away the power, the shame, the guilt, and the punishment of your sins. They are all gone. He has taken away not only has he taken away all of that, he has put upon you righteousness. He has put, he has put on you righteousness. He has put on you righteousness. Man, it's not just what you have, what he has forgiven you from. It's what he has forgiven you into. He's not just paid your debt. He has credited your account. You are not 
when, when someone pays your debt, you end up on a zero. And if that's all we got, that would have been great. But with him, we don't end on a zero. He puts a credit on top of that. He gives us his Holy Spirit and his righteousness. So the life that God is calling you to live from today onwards, you don't have to live it by yourself. He's given you His Holy Spirit. And right now, when you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit who will help you in this new journey that you're going to walk. Just lift up your hands. And everyone in the house, if you can just stretch your hands towards them. And just say this prayer after me. It says, Lord Jesus, I believe it in my heart. And I confess it with my mouth from today onwards you are my Lord and you are my Savior no longer do I live to please myself but to glorify you I repent of all my sins and I receive your free gift of righteousness your ways shall be my ways your will shall be my will. I am no longer a slave. I am now a son. I receive your Holy Spirit who will help me to be more like you. Jesus, from today onwards, you are my God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And the church of God gives God a hand of praise. Amen. I don't know what's the protocol, but I'm guessing you follow this lady. Yes, if you can follow this lady uh, uh, all the way. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. as you are, sinful as you are, give God water. Hallelujah. Give Him water. Hallelujah. Watch Him restore you. Watch Him resurrect you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed this morning? Pastor Koketo. I myself in particular was very blessed. I was so, so blessed. Your message touched me this morning. I felt like I needed to hear this message this morning. Father God, thank you for always speaking your word. Father God, thank you for always using your men of God to come here and speak to us, Heavenly Father. Father God, we are thankful. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Pastor may you please stretch your hands over Pastor Koketsu and let's just thank God for, for his life. Holy Spirit, we honor you for this man. Holy Spirit, thank you for using him today to speak to us. Holy Spirit, Swabonila Manja, Konam Sanje, Silis Willis, Yulakel Pilisayo, Nakum Ninimanja Wonke. We thank you for bringing this man in our presence. Holy Father, bless him, bless his family, pour fresh anointing every sing, each and every time he stands on the altar. Holy Spirit, show mercy upon his life. Holy Father, bless him beyond his expectations. Holy Spirit, continue speaking, continue using your servant, Heavenly Father. We want to hear from you. We want to grow. We want to we wanna change. We want to be resurrected by you, Father. We want to be cleansed by you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Hallelujah. What an amazing service, Bazalani. What a powerful service, Bazalani. I really hope you were blessed. I really hope you feel different about yourselves. Hallelujah. 
I hope the shame is gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, men of God. We honor your presence. Hallelujah. We were so blessed today. Unkulunkula kubega kusebenzi sa kubega futi agubusis. This church is amazing. This church has a way of just uplifting people's spirits. This church has a way of healing the broken. This church has a way of changing our mindset. Hallelujah. I myself, I, like I'm very grateful. Believe it or not, I am so thankful for being used by God, for being in this platform. Hallelujah. I see him work in me each and every day and I could not be more grateful. Basalani, amen. Stay plugged in, stay blessed. Hallelujah. May we all share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Goshen Knights, be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Love you guys.